If you were told that this character was intimidated by the gun, would you believe it? Probably not. Let's rewind and amplify the actions, making them appear larger. Much better, doesn't it? Much better, doesn't it? This is another way for you to improve your stop motion animation with the principle of exaggeration as described by Ollie Johnston and Frank Thomas in The Illusion of Life. This principle magnifies the action or idea, making them more appealing and dramatic in the pursuit of convincing the viewer, instead of applying actual realism or distort the character and their actions. This principle operates within what's realistic, but presenting it in a more extreme form to elevate the impact of the animation. It draws similar qualities from old forms of theatrical performances, dance, and rituals, where actors and people who perform them exaggerate movements with other elements which extends their stage presence to command attention by creating a larger-than-life presence, to represent divinity, and especially effective to reach audiences who are seated at a distance. And in animation, exaggeration can be applied anywhere to draw viewers' attention, especially when paired and adapt with other principles of animation. You can apply this principle to your stop motion animation by distilling it down to its most basic shape in the planning or pre-production stage. Let's use this figure to illustrate an example by representing it as a straight line. If we were to animate a punching action to the left, we can pair the anticipation along with the squash and stretch to the right with exaggeration by stepping further to the right. Then lunge to the left, creating a more powerful visual. Or utilize exaggerated props. This could mean selecting a prop with a larger proportion or with an exaggerated feature. It is important to apply this principle on where you want to focus on. If you want a character to appear intimidated, then magnify the action, thus a larger impact, to convince the viewer. Similarly, if the intent is to make a character intimidating, then make the movement larger or use a larger prop. However, unless it is a stylistic or intended choice, avoid overusing exaggeration for every single action, especially the unimportant details, as it may reduce the effect and trivializes the amplification of the action. Additionally, remember to give it sufficient time for the viewers to see the exaggerated action. This may involve giving additional frame and extending the timing for the action. When exaggerating an action, consider the boundaries of amplifying the action and distorting the image. Unless the intent is to make a smear frame in post, keep the proportion in mind in order to maintain the anatomical accuracy to prevent confusing and alienating the viewer. One way to get better using this principle is to consider all points of direction. Does the action involve height? Which part of the body does the action or movement occur? The easiest way is to extend with the same direction that the action is already going towards, or add more direction into the movement, making it more dramatic. If a punch involves anticipation by winding it back, push and extend further back and add a little small dip to give it additional weight. Another way to get better at exaggerating an action is to examine the action and determine its most basic form or idea. If a character enters a fighting stance, start with a basic pose that encapsulates the main idea. It's a good idea to keep this image as a sketch or a picture as a reference and anchor for later. From there, we can scale it up one step at a time by considering each component such as the arm, the head, the body, and legs. Repeat this process until you reach over the point of extreme or if you're happy with it. And if you're unsure if it's over-exaggerated, check back with the initial reference as that will be your anchor that helps you gauge the essence of the original idea. And if it is over-exaggerated, you can always take one step back. Exaggeration is one principle that is both flexible and versatile. It can be used anywhere and adapts very well with other principles of animation. So choose where and which action to apply to carefully to place emphasis throughout your animation. And with practice, you'll be able to command the viewer's attention where and when it matters. If you enjoyed what you saw or found this video helpful, consider dropping a like and get subscribed for more stop motion video. 
and check out other ways to improve your stop motion animation. Thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.